Hello, everybody. Another week gone by. Um, on the, the radio this morning, they're saying it's however many, I don't know, eight weeks from Christmas. Is that something like that? I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. I haven't even thought about November. Actually, even planning for Halloween next week, trick or treat. I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to get some sweets in in case people come around. And apparently we need to carve pumpkins, I've been told. I'm like... Okay, I don't know that I want to do any of that. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> Grumpy over. Um, just we were actually going to open the floor to you at the beginning if you've got any questions you wanted from last week, from this week, any of those things. Um, anything on tips? If everybody's really clear on the tips they're supposed to be doing, I think the biggest thing with tips, having spoken to other people during the week, is that you even if you have a trunk scheme. You still have to pay out the tip the end of the cal- by the end of the calendar month after the date you get the tip. You cannot then say, oh, well, I've got a trunk scheme, therefore I'm going to pay it out once a year. You have to make sure that you're paying it out in line with that. And if once somebody at, so a, at an event says, look, I'm giving you £500, I only want it to go to the staff at this event, one, they don't get to do that because they're not indemnifying you for the fact that you are breaking the law, and that's a £5,000 fine per person if you don't do it correctly. <clears throat> um, and secondly, uh, one, you wouldn't have that conversation with them. you just say, oh, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely, I'll make sure it's dealt with appropriately, or even just dealt with, absolutely, um, and then just go and do what you need to do. Um, the other thing, um, I did the GCMA webinar yesterday, and we talked about tips. Okay, so there were a lot of questions because you can decide how you're going to distribute tips any way you want to, okay? You can allocate them on whatever basis you want, whether you do it on the people who are the tallest in the, your staff or the shortest or whatever it is. You can have whatever criteria you want, okay? But just you need to remember that you are going to issue that criteria in black and white to your staff. So just be aware that whatever criteria you're using you are going to have to tell the staff officially, all staff, that this is the criteria you're using. And my advice was to choose something that would not lead to an immediate um, deluge of grievances about how your tips policy is unfair. So our recommendation, not a requirement, but our recommendation is to do it on the basis of the hours worked by staff in that calendar month where the tips have come in that you're doing a pro rata on the amount of tips. Um, it seemed to be very difficult for the, the GCMA ones yesterday. They got a little bit caught up with, but why should we give anything to the greenkeepers if the people haven't been playing golf? And they've come to the clubhouse for an event, they haven't played golf, why should we give the greenkeepers any tips? And the point is that the only reason, not the only reason, but one of the main reasons why that event is at your clubhouse is because of the course and the surroundings if your clubhouse exactly as it is now was in the middle of an industrial estate they would not be booking with you it's because of the whole package the whole environment that they are booking with you so and we want to encourage team working and not silo working so if everybody benefits from having events there and doing a job good job surely that's a, a benefit um, the other thing that came out was that it seems that um, those tips, people feel very strongly about giving those tips to the food and beverage waiting staff because they don't get paid very well. Well, that's a whole different issue, isn't it? The tips are not supposed to be giving the food and beverage staff a decent wage. They're supposed to be the cherry on the top. If you think that they should have it because they're not paid very well, then you should pay them better. Just something to put out. Um, given that if they are good stuff, you want to keep them. So you need to have it not depend on the tips they get. Because at some point, people not, might not give tips, even though the staff have been paid. So uh, just doing that. Any questions today? I've got a question. Am I on? Yeah. yeah on, on clocking clocking in, staff clocking in. Yes. Um, so we do, the clubhouse staff have almost done it just through the tool system. They swipe in and... Um, and they're all pretty much well, they're all paid hourly basis and things like that. So things like that. Um, there's recently been a um, 
uh, a board director, the greenkeepers need to do it as well. Do they have to, is there any sort of then, they need to follow the same sort of thing? Because I started looking at sort of um, finger rec- fingerprinting or even face recognition, things like that. Um, just obviously it's unique stem as well, but I thought it would be easier than dirty hand doing fingerprints and things are right, that but it's sort of um not going not being very popular. <laughs> okay. So they if if the rest of the staff are required to log in, then it would seem fair to make the greenkeepers log in in some way. It doesn't have to be the exact same way, but a way that is um you know properly verified. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say we had a, a golf club where um, they were introducing this and they had flagged up that they were going to introduce a logging system. And that was when it came out of the woodwork that uh, the head greenkeeper raised that actually uh, three of his staff, including himself, had been w- working extra hours on Gov for the past 10 years and not been paid for it and could he now have three thousand pounds in back pay please because he's he'd he had written it down um and he was responsible for sending information to payroll but he had failed to mention all this over time so now they were going to do a logging system he felt that we should be sort of clearing the decks and could he have that and it's like we have no way of checking whether you did that overtime or not and why have you left it 10 years? You can't have that money anyway. So we dealt with that. But it's just the greenkeepers do seem to have a lot of freedom to do whatever they're doing. And there isn't – and actually you could argue actually that greenkeepers do need to be tracked more because they're usually out on the course by themselves. There's nobody supervising them, whereas the uh, – the clubhouse staff there's always people around to say well you know bob wasn't actually in at nine o'clock he only came in at 10 just before the event so there are people who are sort of keeping an informal eye on what people are doing yeah. but people don't for the greenkeeper so the greenkeeper should have the same system the reason that if you don't do that um is there is a potential to claim discrimination um because um the greenkeepers are white males is that correct, Mark? Uh, yes. Yep. <laughs> and, the, and the clubhouse staff are not quite so white male, um, possibly more females. And it's like, well, why are you making females check in and not the males? So I'm just saying that they would have to raise that and, and they may well never do that. But just to be aware that that's why as well. One, if, if one part of your staff has to log in, why not the other part? And actually there is a discrimination case there. Yeah. Oh, you've frozen, Mark. Okay, we'll come back to that. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Stephen, have you got any questions? Uh, yeah, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, obviously, following last week, uh, which a lot of it was talking about the sexual discrimination, et cetera, and I've yeah. emailed in, you said obviously that our, our handbook, et cetera, currently covers the policy that we have within that. Yeah. Um, the concern still is actually just because I'm just going to, after today, write a report to my management committee recommending yeah. what we do in addition. So I I very much believe that our staff are fine. I, I actually yeah. don't really think we've got too much of a problem with our members, but we need to have the policy in place. But yeah. it's how to actually talk to the members, what kind of poster or whatever it is, that, you know, no, no hands, no touching. <laughs> um, but actually, you know, obviously, I want to do it, and and ninety nine point eight percent will not be affected, but will be upset by what we're putting up. So I just want a little bit of help and guidance as to uh, what what can I say, what can I do? <laughs> okay, so I, I don't think a post is going to be the best way to start off with. No. Uh, my feeling would be that obviously that, like we've said before is to do the online training have we have we sent you the link to the online no, training? yeah the online training we've got but that would be for staff now i've spoken and, and a... for the and for the management committee ah, so okay. everybody so our our recommendation strong recommendation so really really strong recommendation right. is that everybody who is standing as an officer of the club yeah, has to do that as well so that they understand the seriousness of this. 
So they can't say at any point, oh, well, I haven't been in work for 20 years, so I don't know what you're talking about. Well, get up to speed, mate. Come on. So it's, they do that training as well. And that they, everybody, staff and, again, officers of the club, watch that BBC documentary role play thing. Have you seen that? No, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at it after this. I just yeah. wanted to get a little bit more guidance before I yeah. start doing extra work. And uh... Yeah. Okay, so so those would be the the, the recommendation to the, the ones who are easy to do, absolutely. And then you've got the rest of the members, like you say. Um, it would be, I think it would be more of a, not, not a post, more of a, uh, a announcement, a memo. It's not a memo. I know what you're <laughs> saying. Yeah. Um, as a, a bit like we would do to staff, really, actually, as you may be aware, the law has changed around sexual harassment and therefore in order to protect our, uh, we have a duty of care to our staff and therefore we wish to, we are now introducing a new policy proactively, which is, this is what our policy is, that anybody who stands for, to be an officer of a club has to complete online training um, that um, I'm going to say, I mean, I like the no touch policy, that there should be that members are not allowed to ever physically touch male or female members of staff. I'm going to say it it removes any misunderstandings. There's no, there's nothing, oh, well, I was just giving you a hug. No, because your hand touched a part of her anatomy that shouldn't have been touched. So it's just, I don't know whether you do want to go in with the no touch thing, but it was, I would always say, okay, there is a legal requirement and we want to look after our staff and mm -hmm. duty of care and therefore Everybody who wants to be an officer of the club does this. And by the way, we have a no touch rule. Um, or even, sorry, I'm, I'm th I am thinking of my feet here, but whether as well, it's not even a no touch rule that we are going to take on board the, the employment law uh, premise that in a discrimination case, which is what this would be, the person accused is guilty until proven innocent. You will have to prove your innocence the person making the allegation, and I, I, I can see this is not going to go down well, but we need to we need to work on this, and we will work on this, Stephen. Um, yeah. Is that because that's how it is when you go to a discrimination case at tribunal? You have to prove you are innocent. You do. They don't have to prove that you're guilty. So it's like actually that's going to be the default going forward because if we get taken to a tribunal, that is the basis that we have to defend ourselves on. So therefore, just be aware that going forward. If an accusation is raised against you, and I'm going to say, um, I had this yesterday, I did a committee training yesterday, and they're like, but what if somebody makes it up? 21 years I've been doing this, nobody has ever made it up. The only dispute has ever been whether they could, the person who's been accused can remember it. Oh, yeah, I don't really remember. Well, did you, do you think you did it? Yeah, probably did do it. Yeah, okay. So it's a, um, and there's always the option, but we would still go through a process. We're never. We're not just going to go automatically. Yeah, you're guilty. Right, out you go. We're still going through a process, but the process is the onus is on you to prove your innocence, yeah. not on them to prove that it, it actually happened. So it's just it's stating that this is going to happen because this is coming into effect from the 26th of October, and it's only going to get worse. So yeah. it's uh, yeah. I think we do need to. You're right. Actually, we'll we'll have a think about it at this end, Stephen, about how yeah. we can approach it because. I know there is going to be pushback um, from members. It's like, well, I would never do anything like that. Yeah, but the problem is there are people who would. It's just like anything in law, in pl employment law, most people wouldn't do it, but there are enough that we now have a law yeah, on it. Much. That's the thing. It, so, it, what yeah. about, um, so as I mentioned it in my head of department meeting at the beginning of the week, and then today I mentioned it to my front of house manager, who's a female, yeah. and she said, well, does that mean I can't give Matt a cuddle? And well, I said... Well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to say we we have a lot less issues. It sounds weird, but we have a lot less issues staff member to staff member, and we have really clear processes for dealing with that with the ACAS guidelines. The problem is member to employee yeah. because the member disciplinary procedures are not as solid as the ACAS processes. And people are like, and this is, sorry, this is the one that we had this week where the, the guy was guilty. He admitted he was guilty. He apologized. The only thing that hadn't happened was the actual sanction being issued. 
but the club still thought it was appropriate to let him represent the club, even though there was no doubt about his guilt for sexual harassment, because he's a really good golfer. And that's where the problem comes in with members. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's why it's it's really is um we don't we I, I can't even remember the last okay, we did have one the last month actually, the chef who was making sorry, it's not funny, was making the waiting staff give him a kiss before he would give him give them the plated food ready to take out. Is yeah. that and you're like, what? But that is really easy for us to deal with. And he was dismissed. So they go straight forward. Um, and people obviously learn from that. But it's the members where they're like, yeah, I know he's guilty, but, you know, he just gets a bit handsy and it's not a big deal. And everybody likes him. And he's understood that he's done it wrong and he won't do it again. And it's like those that it's those situations where it's the no touch because those are the ones where people are going to try and wriggle out of it. That yeah. That's my concern. It's not concerned so much between staff because we have got the processes and we can deal with it. But I am concerned about member to employees. That's the thing. And you've mentioned obviously no touch and obviously about physical contact, but actually um, <laughs> by words of talking. Uh, yeah, as well. Well. At a previous club, I actually my receptionist, stroke assistant, um, I witnessed my door was open to my office and one of the members, a past captain, came in and he was totally inappropriate to her. Yeah. And I kind of caught it and then literally as he went out, I had a quick word with her and then immediately went and had a word with him. Yeah. And he thought it was totally acceptable, but yeah. he'd never, he's never done it since or until I left. And she yeah. couldn't believe, she, he's always done that. Nobody's ever done anything about it. And I couldn't believe yeah. it. He was so inappropriate. Yeah. Um, but that would be equally uh, counting. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And so, and that's really the conversation. If we say it's no touch, that also means effectively no, no verbal touching, nothing inappropriate. And we can go through and define that and we can try and uh, we'll have a look at what we've got and we can develop something that would be a good idea. Thanks, Stephen, for us to, to try and define that more clearly. And there's always going to be somebody who says, oh, yeah, but I didn't mean it. But it's like if you say anything that is inappropriate yeah. and, and it's – this is why it's them doing the training, the officers of the club doing the training so that they understand, because that does go through, can you say this? Can you say that? Can you, And explains why you can't do that. Um, they then go, oh, I didn't realise. I mean, some of it is like, you're really, it's really obvious that you can't say, sorry, the ones we had this week were, um, show us your tits. Oh, your tits aren't very nice. It's like, I don't need to see them anyway, so don't bother showing them to me. It's like, what? Why would you think as a grown man that that was a suitable language to deal with a member of the of staff? So, oh, well, yeah, but it's just a bit fun. No. It's not. Yeah. I mean, we had a couple of months ago, uh, one of the members said something to my bar manager about the young girls that were working. Yeah. And um, it was reported to me. I, I, I asked a good few questions and I went and spoke to him. And similar to what Steve said last week, he felt the yeah. world had gone mad. I said, it may have gone mad, but these are the laws and, and you're not allowed to say that. And he hasn't done anything inappropriate. He hasn't said anything inappropriate since, which uh, yeah. so obviously, and as particularly as it wasn't a physical um, contact, you know, is it, but, but he just said, no, you can't say that anymore. It's no longer yeah. acceptable. And uh, so, yeah. but, but, and, and, and actually, again, in both those cases I've mentioned, I'd like to feel because I dealt with it in the right way. Yeah. I was expecting both of them to hate me forever, but actually they've actually been better, almost yeah. more respectful. And uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Also, the staff members uh, have actually seen that. You know, I've, I've effectively stood up for them, which uh, yeah. Yeah, and there's been no um, victimisation of you or the staff members for that. And this is the thing that people sometimes worry about saying anything because they think the person's going to be horrible to them. Um, and sometimes they will be. Obviously, we, there's yeah. always going to be somebody. But the point is you have to say, even if it's just that is inappropriate, please do not say that again. That's it. You don't need to say anything more. But because nobody's ever said that to them, they're, they're like, well, it's just a joke. And if you And if you get upset, and the thing is to try and, sounds awful, trying to take the emotion out of it. It's like, that's inappropriate. Don't say it. Well, I don't see why I can't say what I want. It's a free country. Well, it isn't a free country, and you can't say that. If you want to say it, go and say it to, you know, the car park 
but you do not say that to a member of staff. Um, the only thing I would say, Stephen, is that um, is just a tweaking what you said, should you need to say it again to the person, is like, um, it's illegal, but it's I would put more stress on the inappropriate. That is totally unacceptable to talk to our members of staff like that. Um, one of the things that always comes out in, in social media is is reminding these people that would you want somebody to talk to your wife or your daughter like that? And I find it weird that we have to remind these people that the the staff, the women, are just like their wives and daughters. They are also women. Why do I have to remind you that they're all the same gender? Why do you think if you're not related to them by blood that it's okay to treat them so badly, but it's not if they're related to you? I, I find that a bit weird but it's then um, but it is it it's that it, this it is inappropriate and it's now illegal so but it's inappropriate and we don't tolerate it so don't say it again i'll say what i want okay well then we might need to look at the member disciplinary policy yeah. are you up to speed on that and they'll go away and they'll see sense hopefully so like they have yeah so we're gonna get there everybody does it a teeny bit we'll get there together okay fine Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we've done tips. So, Amy, have we have you got any horror stories this week? I have. I've got a horror story, and then I'm just going to touch on the employee rights bill as well. So I'll do that first. So last week we talked about the employment rights bill that was released by the government last week. Um, it's just a quick reminder because we've had a lot of quiet inquiries this week about it. We are not expecting any of this to come into force before 2026. So please don't panic too much. You know, we will send out guidance and information as and when we get it. Um, I think the big one is the dismissal under two years and the protection is going to be from day one. But we are looking at a probation period which will allow us to terminate employees if they are not working out. We're looking at about nine months is what they're saying. But who knows? That could go up to a year. We've got no idea. Um, but it's just a reminder to everyone that 2026 is the year you want in your brain. Before that, you know, we can just carry on as we are and any further information we'll get, we will share with you in time. So my horror story this week is on a disciplinary that has gone completely wrong. So we had a client this week um, who wanted to investigate a member of staff for persistent lateness. Absolutely fine. We provide them all the information on how to conduct the investigation and that went ahead absolutely fine. Um, they then decided to take it upon themselves with the information that we had provided from the investigation to complete the disciplinary hearing. Now, that would have been great until we realised that the person that had completed the disciplinary hearing was the same person that had completed the investigation. Unfortunately, that has null and voided the entire process. Um, you have to have two separate people to complete the stages to ensure impartiality and to ensure that there is no conflict, no opinions coming in, and it's a fair process for the employee. Um, they wanted to issue a warning to that employee for the persistent lateness. Unfortunately, they were not able to go ahead with that uh, because the process has been compromised. Um, we have now settled on an advisory note, but it's more of a message to say, if at any point you're unsure, please let us know, reach out. That's what we're here for. We can guide you in the right direction. Um, don't just take it upon yourselves to just try and rush through the process as quickly as possible. I know we want to get these things over and done with, but we've got to follow the correct steps and the correct process to ensure that there is no risk for you to come back on you as the employer for your employee to turn around and say, no, that wasn't fair. You can't do that uh, because you guarantee there will be one employee that will really push back and take it all the way if they can. Um, so, yeah, just if you've got any any concerns at any point that you're not sure about the process, or you're unsure on what to do next, please reach out to us and we can guide you on the next steps. Um, and the other thing from that case as well, it was about persistent lateness. However, there were health considerations. Um, what the club decided they wanted to do, which is when we found out what they'd done wrong, was they wanted to issue a final written warning for lateness, even though they hadn't done the first written or even an advisory note. For punctuality, you cannot just skip to final written. You have to go, well, you don't have to go advisory. It depends on the situation, but we would usually say for punctuality, advisory, 
first written, final written, because actually punctuality is a, is quite a finite one from time period because it's not as vague as improved performance. It's like, are they in on time? OK, so you can actually have potentially one week or two weeks between disciplinary meetings. Obviously, that's a fun situation doing them so regularly, but you don't have to give them a month to improve. You can go, right, you've still been this week. You've now been twice late again after the advisory note. Right. We're going into a disciplinary first written. Right. The week after that, you've now been late again. And the, and you're going through the, the issues but it's like it is a very finite period of time before you get a dismissal and you can dismiss for punctuality. But you do need to make sure you're going through that process. And like Amy says, making the same, making sure that the right people at the right time. It's great that they felt that they were confident enough and knew everything to go ahead with the disciplinary. We'd rather you checked. Just check, because if we say, yes, that's perfect. Wow, you've got kudos. And if not, then we've protected you. But yeah, just just check with us before we go ahead. Uh, Melanie Drake, have you got any questions? Is everybody perfectly happy at the moment? Well, not perfectly happy, just not noisy and moaning. I'm guessing that's all we're looking for, really. Okay, um, good. Okay, well, we're going to leave it there. We'll be back again next week. Any questions in the meantime about tips, sexual harassment, employment rights bill, or just even everyday stuff, um, send us an email, give us a call, and otherwise have a good weekend, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. If you want a free tribunal audit of your employment contract and handbook, click the link in the description below.